church this morning. I love you. I send blessings to all of you from the nations of the world. We're so delighted that you can be here with us. I'm Dr. Kilafa Kali from Kingdom Apostolic Ministries International. And uh, we are so excited about our morning's broadcast coming live to you across many different platforms, wherever you are and whatever platform you're using. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for coming on. Many are still coming on. We just love you. I'm just going to pray and worship while some of you take a minute. And then we're going to go straight into the Word. It is an exciting time to be in the Word of God. Praise the Lord. Yes, I see you. I see you. I see you. I see you. I see all of you. I see you. Praise the Lord. Uh, God bless you. Would you just love the Lord this morning? Father, we just love you. Father, we just praise you. Father, we just honor you. We just bless you this morning. We just love you this morning. We just love you. We just love you. Thank you, Lord. Oh, we bless you. Oh, we honor you. Oh, we lift you up. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. We have a powerful message. We're going to be talking about the reign and rule of Christ Jesus. Listen, it's going to be powerful. I know you're going to be blessed. I know you're going to be encouraged. And I want you to get your Bibles. We have a loaded, loaded, loaded work today in the Lord. We have a lot to cover, so get excited. Get your Bibles. Get your pens. Get your hearts worshiping the Lord Jesus. We're going to dive into it. Why? Because once we understand the rule and the reign of Christ Jesus, there is nothing that's going to stop us in this life. Once we understand his rule and his reign, guess what? Everything else falls beneath his feet and we have complete victory. That's what I want to share uh, with you today. Just give us a minute as we worship the Lord. Thank you, 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 Lord. Oh, bless his holy name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Get ready. 
In the next 60 seconds, we're going to dive into the Word of God. And while you're waiting, let me just, uh, again, just, I stood up for a reason, but I want to introduce to you and reintroduce to some of you right now the Word of the Lord. I ask you to get these copies. This book, it's a powerful set of books and ministry work that we've been working on. And uh, it's being released. Here it is. We have about six books to add to your library. This last half of the year, you need these books. Go on Amazon. I have copies. We have gone through, uh, uh, I guess, almost a few hundred of them are almost gone. You need this. This book here is The Kingdom, How to Experience Heaven on Earth. Go to Amazon or contact me. I'll get this book hard copy to you. This is loaded with principles on how to live your life. The power, how to experience heaven's authority and the glory. These three books are called the trilogy, the kingdom, the power, and the glory. These books are going to bless your lives. Please, please, I ask you before they run all out uh, to go and get it. But guess what? We have part two of the kingdom. Yes, that's it. We have the part two to this book. This is part one. This is part two. Go ahead and get part two of the kingdom of God. It's going to bless your life. I'm telling you, my life has been transformed after writing these and releasing them. Our lives and our ministry and those who support and follow and work with us and are partners with us are being tremendously blessed. They are being, I mean, the stories are coming in of how they're being changed and how they're being transformed and how they're being uplifted. I want to tell you, it is an exciting time. I'm going to be teaching out of this book for the rest of the year, these four books. And I'm telling you, uh, these are some of our previous books. You can get them on Amazon as well. You are my father. I'm your son. Understanding Kingdom Sonship. This is this was forwarded by the late Dr. Miles Monroe. You need to get this. This book is on Amazon. I can send it to you. If you don't know who you are, you need to know who your father is. Praise God. I want you to know who your real father is. Your heavenly father. The father of creation. The father of life. I want to tell you, your life will be transformed. Hallelujah. Your life will be changed. Understanding who you are. And sonship has nothing to do with male or female gender. It has to do with your position in your spirit as a child or a son of God. Okay, if you cannot get that, here are some other books here. A Lifetime Relationship. This is a 52-week devotional for men and women. Uh, how to activate the power and the presence of God in your life. Go on Amazon. Go on Amazon or contact us. We'll get it to you. But if you want an e-book, go on Amazon and it's going to bless your life. I have a special gift here before we jump into the Word. I want to make special mention of this. We have a wonderful, wonderful pendant here. This is a king's pendant. If you can see that there, for this month of July, you see we're wearing gold today. For this month of July and August, for any gift to the ministry, Kingdom Apostolic Ministries, our media ministry, or if you buy the books, they are like $15 each. We want to send you this special, wonderful uh, pennant with a crown in there showing that we are kingdom people. We are children of the king and children of the kingdom. You can get that. Just let us know how we can be a blessing. We want to bless your life back. We want to sow into your life. And we want to transform your lives through the word of God by the Holy Spirit. It's not us, but it's by the Holy Spirit. And your life and my life will be transformed. Well... I'm going to just jump straight into this word. If you're with me, just say amen. If you can hear me, type amen. Like this and share this. We're going to get deep into the word of God today. What an awesome time here. I'm just going to just uh, give you 30 seconds. Get your Bible and let's turn to the book of Colossians chapter 1. Get your Bible. If you can hear me, say amen. Say praise God. I see you call, tuning in from the nations. Hallelujah. Rakish, God bless you. Like this and share this. Angel, God bless you. Good to see you, woman of God. Dendia, praise the Lord. Shalewa, oh my goodness, thank you. Mighty woman of God for liking and sharing and being on here. Uh, darling, hallelujah. Tario, Pamka, Samuel, Bibu, God bless you. Karki, all of you. Tant, 
Hallelujah. You are watching. You're tuning in from around the nations. Come on, around the world. Irma, Irma, God bless you. You're tuning in from around the world. We speak blessings. I speak blessings on your life. Hallelujah. As you tune in, I'm going to just speak prophetically over your life. And the Lord is going to minister to you prophetically. I'm going to just speak. I feel prophetic anointing. I feel an anointing to speak prophetically over your life. Panka, get ready for an expansion of the work of God on your life. Panka, sing. Get ready for a mighty move of God. Bibhu, get ready for God has not forsaken you. Sometimes you feel forsaken, but the Lord has not forsaken you. Angel, the Lord has not forsaken you. Get ready for the greatest last six months of this year. Get ready for things to turn around quickly for your life, for your ministry, and for your family. Get ready. God bless you. Ah. Kelonso, Kelonso, amen. Just type where you're from. I'm going to be praying for you. Kelonso, get ready, get ready, get ready. Ah, Tamishi, Kelonso, Kelonso, God bless you. Man of God, I see the fire of God resting upon you even now. The fire, and the fire, the fire, the fire of the Lord is resting upon you. Kelonso, Hallelujah, because the Lord is consuming some things that the enemy sent after your life. I declare the attack of the enemy on your life is broken today in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Kaki, get ready, get ready. You're about to, you're about to touch, touch your nation and your city like never before. There, the, get ready to touch your city. Get ready to see the city transform. It's going to be an undercover move. But the Lord is going to move powerfully in your life. Come on, like this, share this. If you need a word from the Lord, I, I got a message to preach. But I feel a prophetic wave of God. I feel an apostolic release upon my life to release to you, God's people. I feel an anointing. Somebody's believing God for a supernatural miracle of healing in their body. Somebody's believing for his healing, a back issue. I hear the Lord, by word of knowledge, someone, the lower back, God, you, you, a relative or you are believing right now for lower back, sciatic pain. But the Lord say, I'm healing lower backs right now. In the name of Jesus. That's it, Holy Spirit. Come on, give Jesus all the glory and all the praise. Come on. Come on. Romy up front. Romy, 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 Romy. Ah, the Lord is turning around your financial situation. Romy, God is turning around your financial situation. I see financial harvest that was held back by the enemy. It's about to be released right now. In the name of Jesus. Somebody. Somebody, somebody is dealing with very bad diabetes. You're praying for a relative for with diabetes. The Lord said, I'm touching their bodies right now because of your faith, because of your prayer. I am touching diabetes right now. Peter, 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 Pra, where are you from? Just tell me where you're from. Peter, hallelujah. Even as the Lord said unto Peter, Ah, upon this rock I will build my church. It was not upon Peter, but he said, you should be called Petros. Hallelujah. The Lord said, you are a stone. You are a foundation in the kingdom of God. You are a foundation, Peter, in the work of the Lord. The Lord has his hands upon you, and you're going to be a foundation. Many are coming on you. Many depend on you even now. Get ready for, Peter, your, your life's value to expand, Peter. Because the power of God is upon you. Hallelujah. Germany. Germany is watching. God bless you, Peter. Peter, get ready because there's a revival coming to Germany. Germany, get ready for the power of God to be released upon it. Yes, I was watching something last night with Hitler. Praise God. I was watching that, but the Lord said, even that which happened in World War I and World War II, the Lord said, I'm bringing a spiritual world war to Germany. I'm going to cause a mighty revival to take place in Germany. Hallelujah. And Peter, I believe you are a part of that. Oh, Ghana, Ghana, Ghana. I speak, yes, Ghana, the land of the prophets, the land of the saints of God. But guess what? There is going to be a kingdom move coming into Ghana. The revelation of the kingdom of God. The revelation of the kingdom. Yes, Ghana, you've had great preachers, great teachers, great pastors, great prophets, and you still do. But there's another dimension, and that's the dimension of the kingdom of God is coming into Ghana. The revelation of the kingdom, and all of the believers shall move as a mighty army, and they shall be a mighty kingdom unto the most high God. There's no going to no longer be the 
uh, uh, people who say they're greater and the other people are less all shall come up into their rightful place as a mighty army in Ghana. Ghana, get ready for a kingdom move. Get ready for a kingdom move. Get ready for a kingdom move. There, Jacob, Jacob Chaco, get ready for the power of God to come upon your life. Nairobi, Nairobi, I'm here in Nairobi. God is about to do something powerful in Nairobi. There's gonna be a shaking even in the governmental system, but the out of Nairobi, even with the churches being shut down and forced to be shut down, there is gonna be a mighty move of God in Nairobi. Kenya, Kenya, I hear the prayers of the saints of Kenya. People are praying, people are praying in Kenya. People are praying. The saints are being prayed. The leaders are being prayed. They're being expecting a mighty move of God. And the Lord said, Kenya, I have not forsaken you. Get ready, Kenya. I'm talking to leaders all the time, every week from Kenya. The Lord said, get ready, Kenya. I have not forsaken you. Kenya, Nairobi, Tika, I'm getting ready to raise up your sons and your daughters and they will prophesy and they will take positions of leadership not only in the church but in government and in the marketplace and in the nation and I'm going to transform Kenya quickly for the glory of God. Get ready Kenya, get ready Kenya, get ready, get ready Kenya, get ready, get, get ready, get ready Kenya, Kenya you're about to be touched by the hand of the Lord. Get ready, Kenya. Uh, uh, Sam, just come one minute. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Germany, 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 Germany. Praise the Lord. God bless you. Get ready. Get ready. The Lord is touching. The Lord is touching the nations. Nations are, are aligning. Uh, nations are now aligning to the kingdom purposes. Nations are aligning to kingdom purposes. Nations are coming into their divine assignment. Hallelujah. Praise God. Let me just stick here and say, Hallelujah. Nations are lining up. Nations are lining up. Nations are lining up. Hallelujah. I want to get into this message this morning. Uh, hallelujah. Praise God. I want to get into this. If you need a word from the Lord, we're going to pray and believe God for a prophetic word for you. Hallelujah. Just, just help me with that. Thank you so much. We're today talking about the rule and reign of Christ Jesus. This is going to be powerful. This is going to be very, very powerful. Yeah, this one here, please. Thank you. This is going to be very powerful. I'm going to put on this pendant. If you support the ministry, we're going to send you this wonderful pendant uh, to wear. It's a beautiful crown pendant. Yeah, hallelujah. And it's going to bless your life. I wish I could send it to many of you. Hallelujah. Shalewa. Is this for me, please? Just help me. Yeah, oh God bless you. We're praying for you and your family. Let's get into the word. Colossians chapter 1. As we study the word of God, I found that uh, as we were looking, uh -huh, thank you. As we were looking at the word, we were uh, focused on the rule of Christ. Now we've been talking about the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is also can or can be explained as the rule and reign of Christ Jesus. I want to slow it down now. We'll come back to prophesying and ministering to you prophetically. Thank you. And all those who are here listening and watching, David Tan, God bless you. Uh, from Indonesia, Malaysia, God bless you. Get ready also, Indonesia, Malaysia. The Lord is doing something in Asia right now. Asia is bubbling over and the Lord said, I'm going to transform Asia for my glory. I'm going to remove the lies, deception, of Buddhism and Hinduism and, and the New Ageism and I'm bringing in, praise God, the message of the kingdom into Asia. Asia shall be saved. Asia shall be transformed. Asia shall be renewed for the glory of God. Praise God. If you're from Asia, shout amen. Space here. Praise God. Thank you, Shift Fam. Thank you, Malik. Thank you for our prayer partners. Thank you, Gil. I'm going to need all my space here. All right. Matthew chapter 24, verse 14. And I've been reading this all this uh, pandemic for the last two years intently. And before then, for the last two years, 
I have been reading this. You need to get people on this broadcast right away because it's going to be powerful. It's going to be powerful. And at the end of this, I'm going to be praying for the impartation of the kingdom of God to come into your lives and over your family and over your home. And I want you to receive this blessing, but you're going to have to stick on board. Okay. Jesus said, first point, Matthew 24, verse 14, this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for witness unto all nations, and then the end shall come. Now, this morning, I didn't know the Holy Spirit was going to have me just minister to nations. As you who are coming on and those who are passing through, you represent so many nations around the world. I just wanted you to, to, to be a part of what the Lord is saying and doing. Because in this hour, the Lord is speaking to nations. He's speaking to people groups. He's speaking to tribal groups. The Lord is speaking. Why is he doing that? Because he wants people in every quarter of the world. Every aspect, every city, every nation, every town, every village, every ethnic group, every social group, every group of humanity. He wants the message of his kingdom spoken to. He wants the gospel of the kingdom. What is the gospel? The good news of the rule and reign of Jesus. I want to let you know it's important that we do this because these books that we wrote, uh, the kingdom, the power, and the glory, is really from Matthew chapter 6, where Jesus was asked by his disciples, Lord, teach us how to pray. I'm tying this in now. And when he was asked... By his disciples teach us how to pray. He taught them how to pray. He said, pray this way. Our Father who is in heaven, holy or hollow reverence must be given to your name. Let your kingdom come, your will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Now, I've taught this for the last few months. If you didn't get a chance, go back on our YouTube page or go back on this Facebook page or go to Kami, K -A -M -G, Bahamas com, or go to powerandglorytv.tv and go and catch up on these teachings. We have tons of materials or buy the books. You'll have to catch up. Praise God. You need to catch up on this message. And so Jesus taught his disciples how to pray. And what was important was he said, let your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. What that means, people of God, is that God's kingdom is not ruling in the earth. Uh, you know, there are government systems. I started to say at the beginning, I started to watch a documentary this week, past. And in that documentary, it was highlighting some of the most tyrant leaders of history. I don't want to call all their names. You know some of them. And they documented how these leaders rose to power. And it's interesting because every one of those leaders and some leaders today are dictators, are tyrants. Whether that's in the community, whether that's in the workplace, <laughs> whether that's politically or in your government, wherever you are around the world, there are tyrant leaders uh, because power is what people are hungry for. Men and women, boys and girls desire power because that is an innate, that is a characteristic that is built into every human. Every human wants power. Every human wants rulership. There are some countries around the world where the leader has pushed out every form of human democratic process and they are ruling by force and by authority and by dominion over the people. And they do that because in Genesis chapter 1, verse 28, verse 26, And God said, Let us make man in our own image and our own likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish, over the fowl of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that is upon the earth. So God made man in his own image and in his own likeness, created he male and female, and God, Jehovah, blessed them. Jehovah, El Shaddai, Adonai, the 
Elohim. All of these are the Hebrew names for the Creator. Yehovah, Yehovah. Some call him Jehovah or Yahweh. Hallelujah. Blessed be his name. And uh, he blessed mankind. And so through, through the blessing of Jehovah, Yahweh, Adonai, Elohim, all humans have been blessed. There is a dimension of blessing in every human being. Praise be to the Lord. Uh, but notice the word there in Genesis 1 and uh, 26. Jehovah said, let us have dominion. Every human being has been placed within them the desire for dominion. The word dominion means rulership. It means authority over. It means leadership abilities. It means kingdom rule and reign. Praise God. If you were to translate it, every you better get some people on this. Please, please share this right now. This is going to break the oppression in the Asian nation. This is going to break poverty and lack in the African continent. This is going to break, hallelujah, apartheid mentality still in South Africa. This is going to break the caste system in India and in Southeast Asia. This is going to break the poverty mentality of the Southern African American blacks in the South. This is going to break racial oppression in America. Because when you come into understanding that the Jehovah, the creator, placed within every human being, white, black, Asian, Oriental, mixed, colored, Native Americans, every human, he placed within them the dominion spirits. You were created to dominate. Now these tyrants of history like Hitler, Gaddafi, and Stalin, and Mussolini, they took this, Saddam Hussein, they took this leadership style, and instead of dominating an area, a territory, they began to dominate a people. That is not what the Lord Idiot means. That's the, in Uganda. That's not what the Lord wanted. He wanted man to rule over the earth, over the animals, over the fish, over the environment, and not over people. Anytime there's a rulership over people, that's witchcraft, that's sorcery, that's control, that's manipulation, that's domination, that is ruling by fear, that is ruling by intimidation, that is ruling by, by provocation. And that's not true leadership. That is demonic and diabolical. So when we talk about Jesus now being a leader who came into the earth, you have to understand, he did not take on the nature and the character of a demonic leadership. He took on the leadership of kingdom leadership, which is totally different. Let's talk about the rule and reign. Let's talk about the kingdom rulership. Let's talk about another term is the leadership dominion of Jesus. Let's see how he rules. Let's see how he reigns. He reigns and rules with love and fellowship and authority. How do I know? He rules by this authority. Let's see. Matthew 24, 14, we were looking at it. And the gospel of the kingdom. What is the gospel of the kingdom? When you talk about the gospel of the kingdom being preached in all the world, it's talking about the rule and reign of Jesus. Praise God. It means the whole world needs to hear how Jesus governs. <laughs> Hallelujah. How Jesus rules. What is his rulership when he walked the earth? What is his rulership now? What is his rulership in the future? Praise God. Jesus' rulership is dimensional. It means he ruled before he came in the earth. The Bible said, hallelujah, the Lamb of God that was slain before the foundation of the world. So Jesus ruled. The Bible said in the beginning, God created the heaven and earth. And he said, let us make man. Praise God. Let us. Who is us? The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Jesus existed before the foundation of the world. 
So we're talking about Jesus. What did Jesus say? Jesus said after he was crucified, Now, Father, restore unto me the glory that was placed in me before the foundation of the world. At the end of his ministry in the earth, Jesus said to the Father, Restore to me my position of rulership and authority that I had before I came into the earth. Praise God. Hallelujah. Jamil, God bless you. Indonesia is watching. Nepal, God bless you, Vivek. We're praying for Vivek. We're praying for Nepal. We're praying for the nations. So the nations must know Jesus rule before the foundation. Before the foundation of the world. Then he came into the earth and he ruled for 33 years. We're going to see how he ruled and reigned and rose up humanity, cast out devils, healed the sick, preached the good news of the kingdom to every place he went in the synagogues, in the street, and in the nation. He was teaching them this very same message we're talking about today. He was teaching them about the rulership and the reign of his government. He was introducing his government. He was introducing his style of leadership that he created. He was created and he created every human being to walk in like him. Praise God. And then we're going to talk about the rulership of Jesus. That's going to come. I'm telling you, Satan, you're so defeated in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. You thought you would have been able to stop Jesus, but Jesus rules from eternity to eternity. Praise God. Unto his kingdom, there is no end. Unto his throne, there is no end. Unto his government and his nation and his kingdom, there is no beginning, there is no middle, there is no end. There is nothing that can stop it. And I'm so happy, praise God, that we through his blood on the cross can be washed can be cleansed and can be restored to inherit part of this kingdom praise God I'm just starting my message you better stay with me but this kingdom message the rulership of Jesus must be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations before the end comes the end is not coming because of coronavirus and because of new strains. Yes, all of it is a part, and you must know that all of these events in life are leading up to the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. You must know that the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ is very, very near because the gospel of Jesus Christ and the work of his kingdom and the message of his kingdom and the signs and the wonders and the fulfillment of everything Bible prophesied, everything that Jesus said would happen, all of the gospel is in all of the nations. If you just even look at here today, this message with all of you here, you're representing nations around the world. The gospel of Jesus Christ about his lordship is hitting every nation and the end is coming. But I'm telling you what needs to take place is you and I must continue to tell people in every city, every town, every village that Jesus is not only our friend, he's not only our healer, he's not only our deliverer, but he is our Lord and our King. And he has a kingdom, and you can get access to that kingdom through salvation, through accepting him as Lord. That is a simple message. That's as simple as it's going to get. So this kingdom is coming. Now, let's go to Colossians. Let's get into the message this morning. Praise God. This is going to bless your life. You better stay on here, because this word is going to bless you. This word is going to bless you. Now, let's look at the rule and reign of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Let's look at the scriptures. How are you all hearing me? Colossians chapter 1. Let's look at the rule and reign of Jesus. Colossians. Verses 12. Let's just go from 12. It reads, giving thanks unto the Father, which had made us to be, meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in life. Listen here, people of God. We are being given an inheritance. Not at all weak inheritance. We've been given an inheritance with other believers who believe in Jesus' kingdom like we do. There's an inheritance. So we ought to give him thanks. Praise God. Just go right ahead and just say, praise you, Lord. Come on, let's just praise the Father. Wherever you are, just say, thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. He didn't have to make us to be partakers of the inheritance. I know some people don't like you, but if you're a part of the inheritance of Jesus Christ, that's all you need in this life. You might have all the money. You might have all of the cars. You might have a house. You might have, you know, even a job right now. You might be in prison, behind a prison ball, uh, uh, doors. But I want to tell you, if you have Jesus Christ and you have made him your Lord and King and you're operating in his lifestyle, you are an inheritor of the kingdom. You deserve the kingdom. The kingdom belongs to you and you are reigning right where you are. Praise God. I know that's difficult to believe that laying up on a hospital bed, I'm talking to some international audience, that you are still a kingdom inheritor. I know it's difficult, hallelujah, losing a loved one, but you're still a kingdom inheritor. I know it's difficult with some ailment in your body as you trust God to heal you and to deliver you and get your breakthrough today. I know it's difficult sometimes seeing yourself as an inheritor of the kingdom. I know when it seems like everyone is against you, they don't like you, they don't support you. It seems like you're, you're weak, your month, your year is just being filled with so much pain, I want to let you know that you are still a kingdom inheritor. You better type that right now. Type, I am an inheritor. Hallelujah. If, I, if you believe my faith, put it there. I am an inheritor of the kingdom. Let's read. Who had delivered us from the power of darkness and had translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. I want to let you know, Jesus is not all about some religious organization. Jesus delivered us from the power of darkness. I, I want to let you know I was in darkness. You were in darkness. Our families were in darkness. Our generation were in darkness. What is darkness? It's sin. It was under the control and government of Satan. He is real. We were under his control. We were under his power. We were under his lordship. And it's hard to say. I know we think we're wonderful and good, but we were under the rulership of Satan. According to Colossians chapter 1 to 13, we were under the power of darkness. We were under the rulership of Satan. We were under the powers of demons. Some of you still are. Praise God. But there's deliverance today. Hallelujah. We were under the power of demonic spirits. We were under the power of sickness, disease. We were under the power of dead religion. We were under the power of the doctrine of man. We were lost. We were isolated from the kingdom of God. We were foreigners. We were strangers. We were, we were not in his kingdom. Hallelujah. We were aliens to his kingdom. We were illegal immigrants. But praise be to God, we who were delivered from the power of Satan, the power of darkness, the power of sin, the power of ignorance. But we have been naturalized. Praise God. That word translated really means to be naturalized. It means you were a citizen of one country and by naturalization, by a process of uh, going through immigration and going through citizenship, you were brought out of the citizenship of Satan's kingdom and through Jesus Christ and his blood and accepted him. We have been translated. We have been migrated. We have been naturalized and we have been normalized to be citizens of the kingdom of Jesus with all the rights and benefits of that kingdom. Praise God. I'm excited. We've been translated into the kingdom of his dear son. Who is his dear son? Jesus. We've been translated. In whom we have redemption through his blood. It was the blood that made it an opportunity for us to come out of darkness, out of sin. It is the blood that paid the naturalization price. Praise God. Hallelujah. I spoke to someone who became a citizen of a nation and they had to pay a few thousand dollars. I'm telling you to get their, um, you know, naturalization uh, documents sorted out. They had to raise the money to get that. They had to borrow money, some of them. Hallelujah to get the money. But I'm so glad uh, they got the money. 
and they were able to pay for their legal status documents. And now they're a citizen of that kingdom. Praise God. They're a citizen of that country. And I'm telling you, I spoke to the person the other day, they had their own independence when they got their citizenship, they told me. Praise God. But I want to let you know that you don't have to pay any amount of money for your naturalization into the kingdom of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. It, it was paid for by the blood of Jesus, Joel. It was paid for by the blood. It was through the blood, according to Colossians 1 and 14, we have redemption. We have been restored. We have been paid for. We have been purchased. Hallelujah. Praise God. The blood of Jesus has so much power. It purchased our citizenship. It didn't only pay for us to be saved, delivered, set free, brought under the kingdom of darkness. And that's all and many other things the blood of Jesus did. But the blood of Jesus also paid for our documents to have us naturalized citizens and made citizens of the kingdom of heaven. Even the forgiveness of sin. It will remove the rebellion. Praise God. Let me move on. Now, we're still talking about the rule and reign of Christ Jesus. Praise be to God. Let's talk about Jesus. Colossians 1, verse 15. Who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature? For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible. Whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. Now, now, listen to me very carefully. Listen to me, uh, Apostle. Listen to me now. I need you to write this down. Get your Bibles. I need every Kami leader. Apostle Abraham, God bless you. Hallelujah. South Africa, God, Africa, God bless you. Joel, God bless you. Listen to me. Colossians 1 and 16. Circle this in your Bible. And, 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 and a few other verses I'm going to highlight. I'm just beginning. Stick with me. We're going to dive into this word. Uh, now watch this. This is talking about the rule, the reign, the lordship, and the preeminence of Jesus. This is talking about it. Now, if you are a believer, if you are a teacher, if you are in the kingdom, this is kingdom 101. You must know this or you have no power. This scripture here, I pray that your eyes be open and that you have a revelation like never before. Watch this. Colossians 1 and 15. Jesus now, who is the image of the invisible God. Jesus is the image. Jesus who walked the earth is the splitting image of, G of Jehovah. He is the firstborn of every creature. Watch it. For by him were all things created. By who? Jesus. Oh, I'll let, I'll let you see it. For by him were all things created. By who? Jesus. That are in heaven and that are in earth. Who's that? By Jesus. Visible and invisible. Who's that? Jesus. Whether they be thrones, it was made by and created by who? Jesus. Or dominions? Jesus. Or principalities? Jesus. All my powers? Jesus. All things were created by Jesus. And for Jesus. Now I want that to sink in your spirit now. I want that you, you can't understand the rule and reign of Christ Jesus and you won't have a, authority in your life unless you get this. I'm circling your Bible. Well, how do you know that's Jesus, Pastor? Well, I'll tell you. Verse 17, and he is before all things. Who is he? You better share this right now. Some of your family needs this message. Your home needs this. Share this, share this, share this. Your family needs this. Why? I'm going to tell you why quickly. We've been following too much man's doctrine. And, you know, we've written books, but, you know, I love just the word of God. We've been following too much theology. When I mean, I went to Bible school and I didn't hear anything about the kingdom. Most of these Bible schools are not teaching the kingdom. Most of the messages that are being preached today are not talking about the kingdom, the rulership, and the lordship of Jesus. That's why the people go in on Sunday and leave empty. That's why they go on Saturday and come out empty. That's why they go every week and have a good time, but no dominion, no authority in the earth. 
no ability to cast out devils, no ability to heal the sick, no ability for their prayers to be answered, no dominion over this life, hallelujah, poverty, sickness, disease, riddle their life, because you cannot move heaven and deal with demonic strongholds on an emotion. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. The word of God is a sword and we must use the word to defend. But you must know the word. The Bible said the people that know their God. You have to know your God. Hallelujah. I don't want to know about Buddha. I don't want to know about Confucius. I don't want to know about Shiva and Lashmi. I don't want to know about the Hindu gods. I don't want to know about Muhammad. I don't want to know about Allah. I want to know about Jesus. That's my God. All I think. There is no other name in heaven and earth whereby we can be saved but by the name of Jesus. We spend too much time. Learning about the prophet, this prophet who died. Come on, man. Hallelujah. Aren't they all men and women? Every one of us are men and women. We worship prophets and nations. When they die, we act like they're not supposed to die. We act like apostles are not. Hallelujah. Apostles are going to die. They died in the first century church. Jesus, our chief apostle, our prophet, our bishop, he died and he's gone. What make us think a man cannot die? We idolize men and women too much. We idolize pastors too much. And God is moving it. He is upset. Hallelujah. We idolize bishops and apostles and prophets and pastors and teachers. Yes, we're supposed to respect them. But we're not supposed to idolize them. They're not infallible. They're not above death and disease. We're all just walking through this life. We have a limited time and we have to do what we have to do quickly because when our assignment is done, the next set of people will come on the scene. And we pray we did what was right. We pray we impacted lives. We pray we've done enough to hear the Lord say, well done when this life is over. Hallelujah. But I'm not going to idolize any prophet. I'm not going to idolize Africa. Are you hearing me? Stop idolizing these prophets. They are just bare men. There's one in the Southern African state, South African Malawi. They idolize him. He's just a human. There's one in Nigeria. They idolize him. Man, he's just a human. I hope and pray that around the nations, people take the message of the kingdom and empower their lives instead of worshiping prophets. Prophets are not bigger than the pastor. Prophets are not bigger than the evangelist. Prophets are not bigger than the saints. Hallelujah. The Bible said in Ephesians chapter 2 and Ephesians chapter 4, he has given some to be apostles. Prophets, pastors, evangelists, teachers, they are the servants. They equip the people of God. They raise the people of God up. They're not to be worshipped. The elders are not supposed to be worshipped. They are there to guide and teach and train with the other leadership in the local assembly. What am I saying? We got too much human worship. We know what the prophets say. And we don't, I listen to some of these people they call prophets. Hallelujah. They don't say nothing much about Jesus. They just promote themselves. Am I a prophetic leader? Yes, I am. Commission have came around prophets. I've been around prophets most of my life. And I love and honor the ministry, the office, and the gift. But I've seen the greatest prophets with the greatest faults in their life. I've seen some of the greatest men and women of God who people were just idolized because of their best-selling books, because of their great ministries around the world. And I've seen their biggest flaws and blunders. And it just reminds me that we're all humans. Look at my life. Oh, I've done so many things that I wish I could change. And that's what makes me humble before the Lord. I realize I'm just flesh and blood. I'm here walking through the journey of life just like you and I. I have to read this word just like you and I. I have to accept this kingdom just like you and I. I have to get Jesus to rule in my life with his word just like you and I. And if I don't, I will fall. If I don't, I will mess up on my life. I will mess up on my family. I'll mess up in my home. I'll mess up in my, my personal and career life. I will mess up if I don't have the rule of God's word. Found in these scriptures operating in my life. It's not some prophet who's going to get me through this. 
I can turn into a page. Yes, a prophet can give a word that can transform your life. I've had it. I'm walking in prophetic word. I've had people speak into my life things that the Lord spoke to me and it has transformed my life. And I'm grateful for the mighty prophets and the prophetess and the pastors and the teachers and the leaders that I've had the opportunity to be with who were imparted and impacted my life. But there are some of them, in fact, almost all of them are gone now. Hallelujah. And it reminded me that we are in a process that we must put our eyes on Jesus. The Bible said he is the author and the finisher of our faith. Look unto Jesus. So let's get back into this. Colossians 1 and 17. And he is above all things. This is talking about Jesus. And by him all things consist. This is talking about Jesus. And he is the head of the body the church. Who is that? Jesus. Who is the beginning? The firstborn from the dead. Who is that? Jesus. That in all things he might have preeminence. Jesus. Now, if that doesn't excite you and let you know that Jesus is Lord and God and above everything, I don't know what will. Let me read it all together. Let me read from the start to the end. Quickly, Colossians 1, 15 to, 20, uh, to 28. I'm going to read it together and let you hear the flow, proving the reality of Jesus, proving his eminence, proving his, his lordship over creation. I mean, if this is not true, then everything we've done is false. If Jesus is not who he said he is, if he's not really king, if he's not really Lord, if he didn't really deliver us from darkness into his light, then it's a sham. But if this is true, we need to put Jesus in the place where he is what he's supposed to be, king and Lord. By nature of creation, he is king and Lord. But also by nature of accepting him, he becomes our personal king and lord. And by nature of one day he's coming and he's going to rule and reign and create a new heaven and a new earth. And he's going to rule and reign in this earth forever with his saints. Then, you know, we, we got to put it all in perspective. It's the king who was, it's the king who is, and the king who is to come. Let's look at it. Colossians 1 and 12. Giving thanks unto the Father which hath made us to need to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in life. Who had delivered us from the power of darkness and had translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. Praise God. In whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Watch us now. Talk about Jesus. Verse 15, Colossians 1, 15. Get that quickly. Circle this in your Bible from 15 to 28. It's, I mean, this is the life-transforming message here. I could finish at the end of this because this is gonna, this is gonna shake your life. This is gonna shake your family. This is gonna shake your ministry. This is gonna shake your perspective. You're gonna be free. You're gonna be delivered. You're no longer gonna be bound and, and you know, restricted to trying to please everybody and trying to make everyone happy. This is set me free. This is gonna set you free. It's no more competition. It's no more fighting. This, this is gonna set you free. Hallelujah. This is going to break depression. This is going to break fear. This is going to break the feeling that you failed. This is going to break the, just the torment of the enemy of your life. Watch this now. Colossians 1 and 15. Who is the image of the invisible God? The firstborn of every creature. For by him were all things created. Now if Jesus didn't create everything, this is blasphemy. Watch this. For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things, and by him all things consist. Verse 18, and he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead. That in all things he might have the preeminence. For it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell. And having made peace through the blood of his cross. This is Jesus. By him to reconcile all things unto himself. By him I say whether they be things in earth or things in heaven. And you that were sometimes alienated and enemies in your mind. By wicked works, yet now had he reconciled in the body of his flesh through death. This is Jesus' death. He reconciles 
to present you holy and unblameable and unreprovable in his sight. Praise God. I'm going to stop there. You finish reading it later. And I'm telling you, that whole scripture talks about the rule and reign and the lordship and the kingship and the Godhead of Jesus. I mean, you can read it for yourself. Read it later on. Colossians chapter 2 verse 7. Let's go on. Let's look more at the rule and reign of Jesus. If you're just tuning in, we're studying the rule and reign of Christ Jesus. And uh, as a subtitle, if he rules, then he must rule in you and I. If he rules, then he must rule in you and I. A lot of people walk around saying they're Christians and they're believers. Uh, they're saints. But can you really look and see if Christ is ruling in their lives? Look at their money. What do they do? Is Christ ruling their money? Is Christ ruling their professional decision making? Is Christ ruling their internal thought process? Is Christ ruling in their families? Is Christ ruling in their decision makings every day? I'm telling you people, this is not easy. I know. I, I know. I, I'm going through this and I'm still going through this. You know, it takes work. That's why it's easy just to go to a church building on Sunday, shout, scream, and leave, and then seven days out of the week live any type of life that is, you know, destructive. Because it's easy to go to a building for two or three hours and pretend like you got it all together. Uh, I mean, people do that every week. They go to a building with other people, dressed up nice, looking good, and they pretend everything is all right. But really, what we should be pursuing is the, the, the rule of Christ in our lives through the Word. And it takes work. The Bible, David said, Thy word have I hid it in my heart. The word heart is not cardia. It's the word suke. Thy word have I hid in my mind. So I may meditate on his word. And that I may follow him. That I may not sin against him. When I meditate on the word, David said, Thy word have I hid in my heart. That I may not sin against you. It means when the decision comes to kill or not to kill. I have the word of God. When the decision comes to steal... I have the word, and the word told me, thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness against my neighbor. Thou shalt not cover my neighbor's ox, or his donkey, or his uh, wife, or his children. See, so, the word, if it's not there, then when that time comes to make that decision, I can make a decision about not stealing some money from my employee, employer. Yeah, you know, uh, uh, uh. Because the word is not there. You hear what I'm saying? So what I'm, what, what I'm saying is we have to get the word in from this Bible. There's no power. This, this Bible is powerful in and of itself. But if it, the, the scriptures, if the teachings, if the laws and the principles of this book is not taken up through reading and placed in our mind and in our heart and in our very nature on a daily basis, then it's powerless. This word becomes more powerful when it comes into your life and mind. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of the sinner, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight, David said in the book of Psalm 1, his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in the law of the Lord, which is this Bible, these scriptures, that he meditate day and night. And because of this, that person should be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bring forth its fruit in its season. What does this say? When you, the more time you meditate, the more time you read, the more time you ponder over. The word meditate means to ponder over repeatedly, over and over and over and over and over again. The more time you take this scripture and you gravel, and you grab the scripture, and you read it, or you listen to it, hallelujah, we're in a high-tech society. You can listen to it on YouTube, you can listen to it on your, on your phone, your smart devices. You can use, listen to it on your, you know, cassette or CD or MP3 or MP4 player. And you get that word in, the more you listen to it, the more it's transforming your mind. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. The more your mind is renewed, the more uh, the, the scripture gets in there, the more it begins to transform you from out of your old nature. The more you start, you know, being changed. Because the word just gets on the inside. It starts changing your thinking. It starts changing your thinking. And your thinking starts to change. Therefore, it starts changing your behavior. And you start making better behavioral decisions. You start making 
better logical decision based on something that's proven. And the laws of God are proven. For thousands of years, the principles of the Word of God are proven. They work. Whether you're black, whether you're white, whether you're from Southeast Asia, whether you're from India, whether you're from New York City or Canada, whether you're from South America, Africa, or the Caribbean, it doesn't matter where you're from, if you take the principles of this word, it works everywhere for every person, regardless of race, age, color, nationality, sex, it works and it brings good results in your life and mind. Praise God. And so it takes work, people of God. Christ is not going to just reign in your heart because you said, uh, you know, I know Jesus. Well, the devils know Jesus. Well, the Muslims know Jesus, but doesn't mean they're being transformed. Doesn't mean they believe what Jesus said. Doesn't mean that he governs and rules their life based on his words that he taught while he was in this life. Hallelujah. Many people know him, but many people uh, don't have him as Lord and Savior. But let's get back into knowing him. Let's get back into knowing him. Colossians chapter 2 verse 7. Hallelujah. Let's read verse 6 first of all. Again, we're looking at the rule of Jesus. I mean, if he is who he said he is, get ready for your life to be transformed. Get ready for your life to be changed. Get ready for your life to be delivered. Uh, hallelujah. I'm not going on what some preacher said. I'm going in the word of God for myself. Ah, uh, hallelujah. 2021, if it hasn't showed you this, I'm going to throw in one or two things. Uh, if it hasn't taught you anything, I've learned and uh, since the pandemic, I'm going to read the scripture for myself. I love every pastor, every leader who's teaching. Praise God. And uh, we are a pastoral ministry as well. But I, I just decided to be like the Berean church. Do you know the Berean church? That was a church when Paul began to teach. They and Peter during the early church uh, of Berea. They went in and they took the scripture. And they just read it for themselves. And they challenged everything the, the early leadership said. Because they just didn't want to be spoon fed anything. They wanted to know the word for themselves. Hallelujah, I can't just trust anybody with my life. I can't trust anybody with my faith. I can't just trust anybody with my spirit. I need to dive into this word for myself. I need to check with what you said makes sense. I need to cross-reference it. I need to go over it line by line and precept by precept. So let's get into what I'm saying now. Let's get into the scripture now. Not what Kilafo says. Let's get into what scripture says. Colossians chapter 2. Verses 6. Praise God. Thank you. Excuse me. Verse 6. As you have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him. Oh my goodness. That's loaded right there. Can I just take half a second? As you have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord. That's three terms for him. Christ means from the Greek word Christos, which means the anointed king. The word Christ is not Jesus' first or last name. The word Christ is a title. It means it's from the Greek word Christos. Christos, C-H-R-I-S-T-O-S. And that means the anointed one or the anointed king or another uh, transliteration of it, another word that gives the same meaning is the word Messiah, 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 all right, so Messiah is the Hebrew Old Testament term for the New Testament Greek term, which is uh, Christ, secondly, Jesus is the word Yeshua, which is, uh, Yeshua means the Savior, or Jehovah saves, Jesus is not some random name that angel gave Mary to call this young boy. No, it was a specific name. The word Jesus means uh, uh, Jehovah saves or Savior. Uh, the actual Hebrew name for Jesus, we call him Jesus in English. The Hebrews call him Yeshua. Hallelujah. Uh, the Greeks call him Aesos. I-E-S-O-U-S. That's Greek. Hebrew is Yeshua, which means Savior. And of course, the word Lord, the original word for Lord is 
Adonai. Adonai. So the Old Testament word is Adonai. This passage right here is just loaded. So he's saying, as you have received the anointed king or the Messiah, Jesus who is Savior, who is Adonai, walk ye in him. That's the subtitle for my message. If Jesus rules and reigns, the rule and reign of Christ Jesus, if he reigns, then you got to live for him. you got you got to let him rule in your life. Walk in him. Watch this, verse 7. Rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith, as you are being taught, abounding therewith with thanksgiving. Beware, beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit, after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. I am telling you, uh, Paul uh, had the same challenges back then with today. Beware that men do not come with these wonderful philosophies. As I flip through the channels, as I flip through even on social media, all I can hear is the philosophies of men. Wonderful new talks, wonderful new sayings, wonderful new catchy phrases and introductions, and very little to do with Christ, the anointed Messiah. Very little with the kingdom and his rulership. And I'm like, whoa. What an amazing thing. I mean, I've heard so many. I went to Bible school. <clears throat> I went to Bible school as in the primary school, Christian school, and high school, and then off to Bible school. And I'm telling you, a wonderful philosophy. All of these church doctrines. I mean, every, every church, every denomination has this doctrine. And that's good. But I mean, there's some people who know the doctrine more than they know Christ. I mean, there's some people, I was talking to a brother of a different denomination, and I, I, I asked him, you know, to, to just quote 10 things Jesus Christ said. He couldn't do it. Hallelujah. And I said, you know what? We, be, we have all of these books. When you come into these denominations, they load you up with all of these books for their doctrine. Hallelujah. They give you their popular writer. They give you their founder's books and material. You have to study all of this doctrine, all this philosophy of man, all of this philosophy of the, the tradition of man, all of these teachings of the world system, and, and it's loaded in our minds, and very, very few people that walk the face of the earth knows all of the doctrine, all of the teachings, all of the words of Jesus Christ. I don't mind you learning your, 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 your church's doctrine. But for God's sake, know the doctrines of Jesus Christ first. How can we serve a, a Savior and a Lord, but we know more of a man's philosophy, a man's belief system, a man's system that said a woman can be saved, a woman can share the gospel, a, 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 a doctrine that says a woman who puts on a little makeup to make herself look good is wicked and evil. Someone who wears jewelry is going to hell. I mean, man's philosophy. Jesus never said a thing like it. But we've developed all of these systems. Oh, a man cannot wear a shirt. Oh, a man cannot wear pants this color. Uh, I mean, the, the, the philosophies and the doctrines of man's philosophical view of God that they introduce as religion, that they have put burdens on the minds of people Hallelujah. A woman hair should only be this style. Come on. Those things are rudiment things. Those things are the philosophy of man. They have nothing. I've searched every word of Jesus. 132 words and I've listened to over five hours of the words of Jesus multiple times week after week. And I've never heard him say anything about shoes, about wearing jewelry. Wearing a little makeup to fix your face. Wearing an outfit. Huh? But men have built entire book catalogs that they push down on people. And so instead of people living for Christ and living and learning about his rulership and his love and his liberty and his freedom, while at the same time learning his laws that bring you success and protect you from going out there and violating laws that will damage your life and your family. They are burdened with trying to fulfill all the laws of man, which Jesus had to come because Israel couldn't keep all of the 600 laws of the Old Testament. What makes you think 
if the most righteous people at the time had all of the laws, which were the Hebrew people, the Israelite people, when Jesus came on the earth, they had the scribes and the Pharisees and the laws. They had all of the writings, over 600 laws of the Sabbath, of foot washing, of hand washing, of food washing, of, of you know, marriage and laws of government and laws of social interaction and stealing and, you know, government and bathing and washing and even down to birth and circumcision and menstrual cycles. Huh? What things should be done on Sabbath days and should not be done down to the art and to the science? What makes you think you and I today as Gentile people can even compare to that? But Jesus had to come and give us grace because we in our own ability cannot observe all of the laws that are within. So Paul said, when the writer of Colossians, who they believed to be Paul, was teaching about the kingdom laws. I know this is not an easy message because this is breaking down the religion that says you are nothing. And I'm here to say you are somebody. All you need to know is know who you are in Christ Jesus. All you have to do is let him reign in your heart and you won't be burdened with all of this philosophy and all of these ideology and all of this confusion and the world is being confused and they're looking for the truth of the gospel and when they turn to the truth of the gospel they find 50 different denominations. They find 100 different doctrines. They find 1,000 different branches and viewpoints on every issue. And we... We have put all of that in front of the world. People who just want to know Jesus. We give them all of this doctrine. What they can do and not do. They become discouraged. And I watched something on TV last week. Most of the people who were supposed to be running to Jesus at this time. You know they're running after? Islam. Many of them in the US. Are running to the. Especially the African blacks, they're running for, to this new Hebrew, the tribes of Hebrew, they're running to that because they, they're looking for something and they don't want all of the rhetoric. They're running to the nation of Islam, they're running to these types of uh, philosophies. Why? Because they want some truth and every time they come, hallelujah, there's no kingdom teaching. It's just do's and don'ts and follow me and this is how to be blessed and and when you give me your money, you will be blessed. You will be prosperous. No. If you follow Jesus, you'll be blessed. And with you, you'll be prosperous. And when you obey his word, he'll tell you that you are to give your tithe and offering. And he'll tell you how to bless the poor. And he'll tell you how to uh, help the orphans and the widows. And he'll tell you how to live and manage your money and be a good steward. And he'll tell you the parable of uh, the stewardship, how to sow uh, some uh, one talent, five and ten, and how your money will increase. It's found all in his teachings. Let's get back. So be careful. Be careful of these philosophy. Now watch this. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. For in Jesus, let me try, try, take out him. Colossians chapter 2 verse 9. For in, if, if you would allow me. For in Jesus dwell all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Now, if you have a problem with Trinity and all that, Trinity, the word Trinity is not found in the body uh, in the Bible. But Jesus is the fullness of the Godhead. Now, however you want to interpret that, you go back and pray. Uh, I, I, but, but this is saying, for in Jesus dwell all the fullness, not the halfness, the fullness of the Godhead bodily. I just believe Jesus is Lord and God. I just believe, according to the scriptures we just read this morning alone, he is preeminent. He is Lord. He is sitting there. And, uh, you know, the, the, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Jehovah, Yeshua, and the Holy Spirit, the Raha Kodosh. The Holy Spirit, they're one. How they function, how they operate, we, I, I don't believe we'll ever understand on this side of eternity. But I believe that Jesus has preeminence. I believe, according to what the scripture says, that in him is God, the God nature. In him, he created things. He was right there at the beginning, and he rules with the, the heaven, and he's going to rule in eternity. Let me just show you that. 
And you are complete in him. Who? Jesus. Which is the head of all principality and power. Now, praise God. Some of you are afraid of demons and devils, witches and warlocks. That should make you excited. Jesus is the head of all principalities and powers. Now, that's principalities and powers that are good and bad. Or you could just tie that into Colossians chapter 1, verse 16, that he created the heavens. Watch this. For by Jesus were all things created that were in heaven, that were in earth, that were, <clears throat> whether they be thrones, dominions, principalities, and powers, all things were created by Jesus and for Jesus. Praise God. So Satan, Lucifer, demons, angels, I mean, human governments, <clears throat> government systems of the world, all were created by him, for him. And for his purpose, he can move it when he wants. He can change it when he wants. He can do whatever he wants because Jesus is Lord and he is in charge. And I'm telling you, I prophesy today, no devil, no demon, no witch, no warlock, no wizard, nobody operating under the dark clouds of the occult of any form can have power over you because you belong to Jesus and he protects you. Praise God. And their power is not above the power of his power. He, he's the head. He's over every principality. Satan doesn't want you to know that. The devil, he is real, very real. He's very destructive. He's destroying humanity from the beginning until now. Hallelujah. And he's going to continue to do that until Jesus finishes him off and casts him into, you know, the lake of fire and casts him into the bottomless pit. As you will read in Revelation, we'll get to that another day. But I'm telling you, uh, he uh, he's going to have his time him. The Bible says hell was created for the devil and his angels. I'm going to show you that. Hell is real because there's a real enemy called Satan, the devil, the deceiver, that snake, that serpent, that dragon. And so there must be a place for him to go. And the Bible said, and I'll show you that, he's going to a hell. Praise God. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. In whom also you have received, praise Jesus, hallelujah, Justin, God bless you. In whom also you have you are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands and putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. You and I have been buried with him in baptism, wherein also you are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God who had raised him from the dead. We operate in him. Jesus rose from the dead. No other being in history can say they rose from the dead and stayed alive. Praise God. You know, Elijah rose a young widow's son from the grave, but he died again. Lazarus was rose from the dead by Jesus, but he died again. Jesus is the only one in history. Muhammad didn't, wasn't raised from the dead. Buddha is still dead. Confucius is still dead. Uh, Saddam Hussein is dead. Adolf Hitler is dead. Uh, Gaddafi is dead. Hallelujah. Praise God. Huh. All of the writers, hip uh, Plato, Aristotle, they are dead. But Jesus died and he is alive forevermore because he has all power. He has power over death, hell, and the grave. And because of that, he reigns over death, hell, and the grave. Praise be to God. Woo! We are buried with him in baptism. And we are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God. He is raised us from the dead. And you, being dead in your sins and uncircumcised, uncircumcision of your flesh, he quickened together with him, having forgiven you all of your trespasses. Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against you, which was contrary to you, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. I want you to see, you and I were ruled by Satan, but Jesus Christ, let me tell you, people are not going to die and go to hell because of sin, only. They're going to die and go to hell. Muslim, Buddhists, Hindus, atheists, Satanists around the world. People are going to die and go to hell because they refuse to accept the mercy and the blood of Jesus that was shed for the remission of the sins of the world. That's what's going to cause people to die and go to hell. They refuse to accept Jesus Christ as Lord. They refuse to accept the blood of Jesus. 
God bless you, Panka. They refused to accept that he took all of our sin, all of our stain, all of the mess, the messiness of our lives, the darkness of our lives, the curse and darkness of our generation and of our ancestors, all that they've done, all that we have done, all of the shame and the sin and the guilt in our thoughts, word, action, or deed. And he took upon himself all of that sin when he was nailed to the cross and his blood was shed so that we could be washed and cleansed. You don't need nobody else beside that blood to cleanse you. He's the only one who could cleanse us. And haven't spoiled principalities and powers. Look at this. Jesus spoiled the powers of darkness. He made a show of them openly, triumphant over, triumphing over them in it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus is triumphant. Jesus spoiled the powers of Satan. He disappointed them. He destroyed their powers. Praise God. He triumphed over them. Jesus is Lord. He's not only Lord over you and I as we make him our Lord and personal Savior. He is Lord over Satan. He owns Satan. He defeated Satan. He did. That's why we in the name of Jesus can cast out devils. We in the name of Jesus, not by our authority, but by the authority that he established in the heaven, that he established in the visible and invisible, that he established when he died on the cross and shed his blood. He established something in the spirit and he gave the keys of that authority and that power. When he went, when Jesus ascended to heaven, he left that authority in the earth with every believer that believed in him. The Bible said to them, to those who believe, he gave power and authority to heal the sick, to cast out devils, to preach the gospel of the kingdom. To the believers, these are the signs that will follow them that believe in my name, in the authority that's in the name of Jesus, in the authority in who he is, knowing that he rules and reigns in heaven and in earth and over everything. Doesn't matter what the devil is doing or he appears to be doing. Doesn't matter what's happening with Corona. Doesn't matter what's happening to world governments. It doesn't matter what's happening in your country. Jesus rules and reigns. It doesn't matter what's happening in your body or someone else's body. Jesus rules and reigns. And he has and he always will. I don't care. We don't tell, you know, we don't determine Jesus' lordship based on what happens. Man, if we can't pay a bill, doesn't mean that Jesus is not still Lord. Man, if something hits our body, it doesn't mean that Jesus is not still Lord. Man, I'm telling you, if you didn't get that word or that prayer answered like you thought you wanted it to, it doesn't change the Lordship of Jesus. He is still Lord. He is still God. He is still powerful. He still has all authority. He still rules and reigns. He is coming back again. He has defeated the power of darkness. For this reason was the Son of God made manifest that Jesus himself, he destroyed the works of darkness. It doesn't matter who likes you. It doesn't matter who receives you. It doesn't matter who wants to bless you or not bless you. You are blessed already because you are a son and a daughter of the Lord Jesus Christ you have come into his kingdom through accepting him that makes you the most powerful being in the earth you can just walk out your life in him hallelujah you'll be free I hope this is blessing somebody watch verse 16 <laughs> praise God let no man therefore judge you in meat or drink or in respect of a holy day or the new moon of the Sabbath Jesus said because you understand who he is as king and lord and because you understand his authority that he has overthrown every other power and he has all power in heaven and earth guess what nobody can judge you i'm free you can't tell me about meat you can't burn me down with drink you can't burn me down with a particular day or new moon or the sabbath days i am free verse 70 which are a shadow of things to come but the body is of Christ. I am of Christ. You can't bog me down with dead religion, dead philosophy, dead religious views. You can't burn me down with, with false doctrine and false teaching and some, uh, you know, traditions of men. I am free in Christ Jesus and I walk in his rule and his reign. Praise God and you should too. 
Let no man, verse 18, Colossians 2 and 18, let no man beguile you of your reward in a voluntary humility and worshiping of angels, introducing those things which you have not seen, vainly puffed up by his fleshly mind. This is saying, don't let anybody get you to not worship Jesus and lose your reward. Many people in 2021, I prophesy, I'm getting ready to close and pray. I'm going to have to pick this up later. Many people have lost their reward. Why? Because they let somebody get them out of God's will. Somebody beguile them. Somebody bewitch them. There is so much bewitchment now. Everywhere you turn, in your city, and your nation, every time I turn on TV or on social media, I see so much bewitchment. I see so much lies. I see so much deception. I see so much religious burden and religious bondage is being placed on people. Why don't these folk let people just love Jesus and serve him? Who made people God over man? Apostle don't mean you, you, your God. You could fall. I know more apostles who, who are falling in sin more than anything, more than the regular person on the street. Why? Because not because you have a title mean you are above sin. You are above error. Not because you are a pastor being. You are above error. We are to stay humble on our face. And don't let people worship us. We are just humans. We are humans. Flesh and blood. Don't let people get you to worship. Now this worshiping of angels don't only mean the invisible angels. There are people who are right now getting their congregation to worship them. There are people who are getting people to worship them. There are some prophets online now who are getting people to worship them and their gift and their calling. That's not yours to let people worship. God gave you that gift. God gave you that opportunity to, to serve his people. It's not your anointing. Worshiping of angels. Angels in the Bible also talk about spiritual leaders. Pastors, there. I mean, I've never seen so much worship of apostles. I mean, there's some people who would idolize their apostle. Come on, I'm not talking about not respecting them, but to the point where they're infallible. You can't see, hallelujah, your, your bishop is a homosexual. You can't see a prophet is a, is a con and a crook and a criminal. You can't see your bishop or archbishop is living a fornicated lifestyle. You can't see... Hallelujah, your evangelist is, is a whoremonger. You can see your elder is a money-grabbing person. Come on, man. We, you got to open your eye. You're so much in love with the person and the personality that you cannot even see their wrong. But if you see their wrong, you refuse to, to stand up and say, Pastor, Apostle, Prophet, I love you, I respect you, but you are in a bit of error. You are taking the church in a different direction. Pastor, I love you, but that doctrine you're teaching is erroneous. That is a false teaching. And, you know, I can't let my family subject to this. I want you to reconsider it. And they're supposed to be so humble that they come back and study and say, Oh, my goodness, I was wrong. Ah, I, I, I studied it. I got some consult on it, and my doctrine is wrong. Hallelujah. There's time I had to come back and say, Oh, my goodness, that scripture meant something else. I'm, I apologize. There's nothing wrong. But if you create a system where people worship you as bishop, as people worship you as pastor, and you want worship, you want people to follow you all over the place, you want people to give you their lives and their money, you want to be the Messiah in people's life. You want to be the Christ in people's life. You are dangerous. There are so many people right now who stand in the way of other people. They want to be the Christ. They want to be the Messiah. They want to be the God in people's lives. Very sad. And many people who were once focused on Christ, focused on living for Him, focused on growing and expanding and increasing in the kingdom, they start worshiping the man who taught the kingdom. 
They started worshiping the woman who could prophesy. They started worshiping the elder who has great eloquence of speech. They started uh, bowing and worshiping the apostle. When Peter and Paul were worshiped, they said, please don't worship me. I'm a mortal man. We got to get people back to Christ. We got to get people back looking unto Jesus and follow me only as I follow Christ. But if I stop following Christ, you better stop following me immediately. I tell you that. I say that today. If I stop teaching this word of God and the truth of this word, don't listen to a word I say. You're following some ministry or leader or person who stops teaching Christ. The Bible said, if anyone preach any other gospel, other than what you heard from the beginning, count it all a curse. Anybody who teaches a message other than Jesus Christ is Lord, the blood of Jesus, the cross of Calvary, salvation only through the blood and name of Jesus. And anyone who teaches any other message than Jesus Christ as Lord, who rules and reigns in your life. If anyone teaches any other message, other than Christ himself crucified and his coming kingdom. Hallelujah. Count them a curse. If they want to come with some new philosophy. Hallelujah. Some new black gospel. Some new Asian gospel. Some new uh, man being Christ. Count it a curse. It's all a lie. Anyone who wants you. Hallelujah. No prophet supposed to make you eat grass and make you drink poison. Hallelujah. The sheep of God. We have to pray for the sheep. They're so gullible. They're being taught to worship idols. So they idolize men. Some of these men have raped them physically and naturally and spiritually. Robbed from them spiritually, naturally and physically. Destroyed their family. Destroyed their destiny. I challenge you today. As I pray for you. Make Jesus King and Lord and follow after him all the days of your life. Do not be sidetracked. Do not be sidetracked. You won't be loved by everyone. But once you're loved by Christ Jesus. You won't be respected by everyone. Because as the crowd is following Narrow, broad is the way that leads to destruction. Many that be on that road, they're on a wide road where anything now, all types of viewpoints, all types of perversion is entering the world and creeping into the church. But when you stand for Christ and you stand for his word only and you stand for what he stand for, don't expect the world to love you. Don't expect your family, some of them, to love you. Some of you are going to be abandoned by your family. Some of you are going to be rejected by your friends. Some of you are going to be ostracized by other spiritual, quote-unquote, spiritual persons. Why? You want to stand for Christ. And when you stand for Christ, it costs you everything. Because I'd rather be right with Christ than right with man. Only the message of Christ is the only authentic gospel. Thank you for that, Jack. You are right. And I thank God as I've been praying and I've been sharing with believers around the world, there is an awakening. I'm getting ready to close. Let me get ready to pray for you. We'll pick this up again this week. Again, many, many of you, many of you, many of you and I are coming into a truth. You know, before this pandemic, I was not certain even in my own faith. But since this pandemic came, I'm telling you, my faith has been concrete. My faith and your faith, many of you listening and watching, is coming whole. I mean, I, I, I mean, many of you have begun to study the Word of God for yourself. Many of you have begun to, uh, Maria, you begin to, to, to seek the Lord. Get ready, Maria. The Lord is going to have a visitation with you. Hallelujah. Maria. Zowa. Zowa, Maria. Jack, Jack. I also had the same thing for you. Visitation from the Lord over the next few weeks. Hallelujah. Visitation. I mean, the Lord is going to open up his word to you plainly. But there's going to be a supernatural visitation from the Lord. Some of you, some of you, lift up your hands wherever you are. There's, I feel the Holy Spirit. I don't want you worshiping me or any man. I want you looking to Jesus. I want you to know that Jesus rules and reigns over every principality, every power. We just read it in Colossians 1 and Colossians chapter 2. Read this again. That Jesus reigns. Hallelujah. He's ruling. Hallelujah. He's ruling. He's ruling. No longer are you going to run after prophets. Yes, prophets are real. You pray for prophets because after they finish prophesying to you, they're going to need a breakthrough in their life. 
Hallelujah. They hallelujah. Pray for the apostles. Because after the apostles pour out into you, they are human beings too. They're going to need to go back to Christ and be refreshed. Pray for the evangelists. Yes, because as they pour out to you, or you who are a believer, as you serve in the house of God, hallelujah, you're going to need a touch from the Lord. That's why we all need Jesus. We need to pray for one another. We need to encourage one another. We have to remind each other that it is Christ who is Lord. It's not by my might. It's not by my power. I have no power, but it's by the Spirit of the living God. And so today, I pray over you. I pray that the rule of Christ comes into your heart now. Lord, in the name of Jesus, come on, I'm going to pray. Everybody, come on. Lord, I pray right now, in the name of Jesus, Jack, I speak the kingdom of God over you. Shalewa, the kingdom, the power, and the glory overshadows your life. I pray right now, Maria, that the Spirit of the Lord fills your life. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Rana. I pray the power of God fills your life. Peter, Peter, sing. Let the glory of God fill your life like never before. May you know Jesus. May you know him in the pardon of your sins. May you know him in, in, in the fellowship of his suffering. May you know him that may the Lord be made known to you, Justin. May the Lord know you. May you be revealed to the King of kings and Lord of lords like never before in this week. May you be touched, you listening audience, you listening here and around the world. Hallelujah. You television broadcast audience who we are recording at the same time. Hallelujah. May you be filled with the power of God. May the eyes of your understanding be enlightened that you may know him. The only begotten son, the Lord Jesus Christ. And through knowing him, may you rise up in your sonship. May you take your place in the kingdom and may your nation be transformed with the message of the kingdom that you will preach because you are free. Because you are transformed. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. I bless God for all of you, Jack. I thank God for all of you listening and watching who stayed on to the end. Hallelujah. I thank God for you all. We love you so, so, so much and so dearly. May I just take this moment to just thank you all again for joining us. May I offer you these wonderful books once again on what I've been teaching on. Go back and listen to this message a few times today. May I offer you these kingdom books. My son Daniel, God bless you. May I offer you this, The Kingdom, Experience Heaven and Earth. This is book one. Go to Amazon, The Kingdom, uh, Experience Heaven and Earth, part two. We are poured into these books, Shalei and I. And uh, our family and our ministry prayed over these books. We've sold hundreds already of being sold. And there are just a few more. The power of God. You need these books. Experience the heaven's authority and the glory. Experience heaven's wealth. I'm telling you there is no lack in our lives. We've seen supernatural, supernatural healing, deliverance, and provision during this pandemic. And I want to let you know you can get it. Go to Amazon. Buy it. It's worth the investment in your life. And while you're there, check out this book, one of my first ones I did. You are my father. I'm your son. I know who my daddy is. Praise God. I'm not talking about my biological father. He's a good man. I bless God for him. Bishop Sidney Colley. Hallelujah. Apostle, I greet you in Jesus' name. But I know who my real daddy is, the one who made me from thy spirit. And from the dimension of my spirit, the one who I live for, the one who I live to please, the one that I can't wait to see his face, the one who made me for me and used me for his glory. God bless you in Jesus' name. Go and get this book. You are my father. I'm your son. Until next time, I speak the blessing over your life. I speak the praises of the Lord be exalted. I speak that you may know Jesus like never before. I speak healing in your bodies. I speak salvation over your soul. I speak the power of God in your life. And I say that you are sons. Yeah, that's right. You are sons and daughters of the Most High God. You are kings and priests unto the Most High God. Go this week and rule with Christ. Rule in your family. Rule in your home. Rule in your marriage. Rule in your city and your nation. And rule wherever Jesus took you to go and rule. And until next time, God bless you. Dr. Kilafo Kali signing out. Go and check us out on our website, kamgbahamas.com. Praise God. Or go to our YouTube page, K-A-M-I Bahamas. 
thousands maybe right now of powerful teachings with us and other people from around the world. Praise the name of Jesus. Go to Power and Glory TV. TV. Shalewa, please put that on there so that all can see that. And please tune in to us. I'm going to have to pick up this message another day. If you want a copy of these books, hard copy, we can get it to you. But go on Amazon and get it. Until next time, I bless you. This is going to be the greatest week you experience victory. I'm telling you, not because my might, not by my power, but Jesus Christ and the revelation of this word is going to break the yokes of your life this week. I prophesy that answers to prayer will be released this week. I declare that people who owe you money are going to come bringing it quickly. I prophesy that over our lives. I prophesy that answers to prayer are being released. I pray right now that the strategic connection of some things you've been trying to put together comes together by the Spirit of the living God for the glory of God on your life. And I pray your family be uplifted and strengthened and protected. I plead the blood of Jesus over our family, our homes, our property and possession, everything concerning us so that we remain safe, comfortable, and secure in the power of God this week. Now, I might come back on later on and teach again. Uh, so, I'll let you know. Until then, Shalewa and I say greetings, blessings, and love to you.